Hi, I'm Alex Walford and in this video I want to show you how you can go about tuning the JDBC multi-topic consumer. Now this is something you'd really only do for large tables. So if you had a small table and it took, say it took eight seconds to move and you were able to move it in two seconds, that's great, but really kind of so what? Now if you have a table that takes eight hours and then you can um, move it in two hours, that is a, a whole different thing. I was thinking about how to identify bottlenecks on the pipeline and obviously the origin is going to be a bottleneck. A pipeline can't go any faster than the data that uh, is uh, being ingested into the origin. I created a dummy data set in MySQL and I got this from the Transaction Processing Council. Now they have uh, a famous data set called uh, TPCDS, uh, that's for decision support, and this is used um, quite frequently for benchmarking performance. They have a bunch of standard queries that they run and these are used to compare databases. Let's take a quick look at MySQL, and I picked one of these tables, so I, I ran a command, it generated all of these tables, and I, I chose one, and it's a fairly big table, customer demographics, I think it's 1.9 million records or something like that, it's got nine columns, um, it has a primary key, so you can see here's the, uh, the describe table right here, let's uh, make this a little bit more readable. Um, yeah, so you can see, look, we have, we have nine columns and a primary key. I then created a very basic pipeline that contains the JDBC multi-table consumer, writes the data to trash, and um, I have a pipeline finisher here, so when the, the, there's no more data, it's going to stop the pipeline from running. Now let's take a quick look at uh, some settings in this pipeline. So look, I have a start event here and a stop event, and I'm using these to capture the uh, start time and um, the end time of ingesting this data. Let's take a look at the queries. So for start event, I have a table uh, called benchmark start here, and, and I'm generating a, a GUID, uh, a unique ID for each run. And this table, let's, let's pop over and take a quick look at this table. It contains, by default, a start time, um, which goes down to milliseconds. That's what this three, date time three, uh, does. If that was uh, didn't have the number three in it, that would just be down to seconds. Um, so when we insert a record in here, we get the time stamp um, at millisecond granularity. There's also a stop event that gets executed when the pipeline finisher um, gets no more data. So look, we have a, a precondition here, no more data. That causes the pipeline to stop. And once it stops, this query um, executes and it writes um, things like the the GUID, which is going to tie together the start time and the other properties. And I, I'm also um, tracking things like the number of rows, columns, uh, threads, things that we, may, we might want to change. So these are threads, batch size, fetch size, and partition size. This is a parameterized pipeline. So if we click on the parameters tab here, you can see that we are going to read in these values at launch time. I've left them uh, blank and um, if we were to say start with parameters we could um, type these um, in but we are going to use uh, Python script to iteratively run lots of different scenarios. Let's take a quick look at that Python script. Um, I have um, some initialization here so I'm go going to um, create a MySQL connection. I have a pipeline ID. So I've created uh, this pipeline and in order to reference it I need to know its ID. So to get the pipeline ID I, I can just look at the pipeline right here and there's the ID. This data collector instance is managed by Control Hub. So the first thing I have to do is authenticate against Control Hub and get a token and then put that token in the headers um, when I'm making API requests. So that is what this is doing, is grabbing that header information and uh, sticking it in the request headers um, dictionary. I'm gonna grab all the tables in the TPC DS database. For each one of those tables, I'm going to collect the number of rows and columns. Um, so that's what this function here is doing. 
And then I'm going to iterate through all these different scenarios. So, you know, we're going to try different batch sizes, fetch sizes, partitions, number of threads. All of this together is a scenario. And these scenarios are going to um, be run um, one after the other. Um, so this is where a scenario gets run. Uh, the first thing it does is resets the origin um, to make sure that we're starting again from scratch. Um, then we start the pipeline. Um, we uh, run the pipeline until it's finished. So we keep checking um, every, every second. This is going to check to see if the pipeline is finished. Once the pipeline's finished running, we restart the data collector. And the reason uh, I'm doing this is to make sure the conditions are consistent between all the scenarios as they're being run so we don't get um, misleading results. So if I pop back up here, you can see that we tried all sorts of different combinations of things. I tried fetch sizes um, in, a, in a previous uh, exercise. It didn't really make any difference. Batch sizes uh, made some difference. Partition sizes, as we'll come to, are very important. And uh, number of threads. So um, we tried all these different combinations. And let's pop over to R now. And uh, we, can, we can have a look at a quick visualization. So, um, but basically what I'm doing here is I'm running a query uh, from those runtime stats that we collected and um, looking at them in R here. And if we, so we can see, look, on the, on the y-axis here, we've got rows per second. Um, and on the x-axis, we've got number of threads. And I've used colors and um, shapes to um, denote um, um, partition size, that's colors, and the shape uh, is the batch size. And the goal in this is to maximize the throughput. Now, I also ran this pipeline without um, any partitioning, and I got about 40,000 records per second. So, so right about here, we have a baseline. So anything underneath 40,000, um, we're, we're, we're worse off. Anything um, over 40,000, um, that was worthwhile partitioning, um, but some work better than others. And uh, the sweet spot for this particular table happened to be using eight threads. Now, I think uh, this is because this box, if, I, if we do a, uh, here, let's uh, have a look here. Look, this, the processor is numbered uh, zero through seven. So this is an eight, eight virtual cores in this VM. And um, it turns out that the, the peak performance is um, when there are eight threads. And I think that um, each thread is uh, using a core. That's my, that's my theory um, here. Um, you can see that it's a square. That's a fairly big batch size. That's a batch size of 10,000. And um, it is blue. And that means a partition size of 10,000. So the sweet spot for this was a fairly large partition and batch size and um, match the number of cores um, to the number of match the number of threads to the number of cores. Obviously, you wouldn't do this for every table. Um, I would recommend doing this if um, you have really large tables and um, you know you, you need to tune them in order to get the most bang for your buck. I've seen people do similar things with Scoop where they'll um, try lots of different runs of a, of a scoop job with different numbers of mappers to try and understand the sweet spot. This is the same kind of idea, really. I'm going to put the code for this in a GitHub repo and put the link in the description below. I hope that was useful. Thank you so much for watching.